Well, hey folks, welcome to Challenge eLearning Challenge 500. Can you believe it? I, I don't think I can. Uh, you know, when we kicked off the challenges 13, almost 13 years ago now, uh, the idea was much simpler. We just looked, we're looking for a way to give folks a way to practice, experiment, and really just see what they could do with the tools they had. And back then, it was all Studio 09 and PowerPoint, Storyline, Rise, they weren't even on the scene yet. But since then, the, the tools have evolved, they've come a long way, and honestly, so has the creativity in the weekly challenges. What started really as just a simple, a simple weekly prompt turned into something so much bigger than anyone here could imagine. And what's kept the challenges going week after week is you. So thank you so much for everything you share week in and week out, helping make this the number one e-learning community. So going forward, I'm happy to announce that we have uh, a way to celebrate this milestone. We have an easier way to submit your examples. So instead of, instead of posting your examples in the challenge comments, actually the challenge comments won't, the comments won't even be on. You'll have a link that goes directly to the recap page. Now, when you submit an example, it's immediately gonna show up in the recap. It gets its own page. Uh, you can add as much or as little context as you want. If you want to write, include some screenshots or a video overview, or maybe you just want to post the example and be, be done with it, whatever you want to do. But the best part is people can comment and connect with you right in that post right there. So it's like a blog post or a forum post, essentially. I'm honestly so excited about this because, well, not because, not just because it makes my life so much easier, uh, because it streamlines the entire process for you. So I wanna show you real quick, just uh, kind of walk through what that new posting process looks like. Again, you can include as little or as much content as you want, but there are a couple key areas that uh, you'll want to include. Things like the title, the screenshot, and of course the link, but um, anything else, I'll just show you what that, what that looks like and give you a couple suggestions. So let me dive in real quick and we'll just submit a, a quick example. All right, so I'm here at the challenge hub. I'm just gonna scroll down to this week's challenge. So this is the new challenge for, for 500. I'm gonna click this to go in there. And what you'll notice here is, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, there are no comments. Although I did add one comment here just to ensure everyone was kind of picking up on it, but there's a link now to the recap page. What I'm using is just some, some buttons like this. May, might come up with something different, but just look for share your examples or some call to action type button that'll link out to the recap. So if I click share your examples, that takes me directly to the recap post. And you'll see up here, we'll have the title of the challenge, interactive comparisons number 500. And then we have this big old button, share your examples. Now what I did do though, just to kind of jumpstart this is I pulled all the examples from the very first challenge, challenge number one, and loaded these in here. Um, what I'm gonna do is contact the different authors and have them either repost or I'll post under their name because I, I don't want these all under my name. So the process looks like this. You're just gonna click share your examples and it's gonna start essentially a new forum post. If you look up here in the URL, you'll see that's really just a discussion. So that's how we're doing this. So the first thing we wanna do is just give it a title. Now the title's gonna be important if we all just, if everyone put the same title, interactive comparisons in e-learning, that's fine. I mean, it's going to work, but you can see sort of, let me come back in here to the initial, uh, a title does help. Next to the thumbnail, the title will give a little more uh, description about what this is about, especially when folks are searching for certain certain types of of posts. But again, whatever you put for the title, that's up to you. And then at the, at, uh, just at a minimum, I would say just do something like first uh, add your image up here to the top. So I've got some images here from my desktop. And I have a screenshot of the, of the example. That's the primary screenshot that really matters. And then I would just add something like view the example. Now I have the example up here under my review. So I'm just gonna grab that link and then come back right here. Uh, control K, I can press control K or if you are more of a clicker, just select it and then you'll have a link up here. Now what I like to do, and I, I've always done this, is I'll also add a link to the image. I think it's just natural. If you don't add a link to the image, it's gonna pop up. The, the image just zooms in, takes over full screen. I'd rather have that as a, as a link. Now I always still make this mistake. I've been working in this community. When you select the image, you're gonna see uh, the initial menu bar, but then the link is actually gonna be right down here below. Add your, add your link and it, it makes that, uh, it puts the link up there for the example. At a bare minimum, I would just say write one or two sentences about what you did, very similar to what 
to what you did for the comments. Uh, let's see, description. If you wanna add a header, that, that's totally fine too. You could just use heading threes and then I'll come down. And that would be enough right here. If I scroll down, I don't have a download. I'm gonna choose challenge recap, but I might add my own, my own tag here because I used a slider. That again, just helps folks find your, your project. So there's my tag right there. And then I have the challenge recap. At this point, that's totally fine. And you can click publish. And that's gonna add, in, in one step, it's gonna add your example right there to the recap. So if I came back up here to the top for interactive comparisons, you'll see that, hey, there's my slider example. Now I'm gonna come back in here and let's say that you didn't add a thumbnail. If you don't add a thumbnail, I might nudge you to put one in or I might add one for you. And the reason being is if I publish it like this without any kind of thumbnail or even a video in there, what happens is it's gonna have this generic placeholder graphic. I highly recommend you include a screenshot of your project. Am I editing this? No, and you'll have, you have edit rights because you'll be the ones creating the actual post so you can edit your example. So really recommend at a bare minimum, add a screenshot, add a link to the example, just like you, you know, you would with the comments and then add just a short description. Again, you don't have to put a lot in there. However, if you wanted to add some more, you know, maybe you want to talk about the design concept that you used. So I have that right here. I just have my little Google doc and I can add that as a, as a heading three. So you can add as much or as little as you want to talk about it. Some of, some of the folks who do these challenges really do a great job writing about it. If you wanted to put something like how it works, you could also add that in here as well. So I could come in and say, that's a heading three. Where'd it, where'd it go? Heading three. Um, you can choose any of the headings, but I would use heading threes because the title is going to be in a heading one. And then if you wanted to maybe, you know, set up a, I said another image in here. Again, you do not have to do this much, right? That needs to be scaled down a little bit. And you could just show some additional screenshots in there. And then finally, if you had any, you know, feedback or production tips, things that you liked about it. The only reason I'm encouraging this, and again, please don't feel like you have to lose your time, you know, writing up a full post about it. The benefit is, is it just gives other users in the community a little bit more context for what you built and also shows I'd say it makes it a little bit easier for folks when they're doing searches in eLearning Heroes because some of these will be keywords that you would otherwise find. And if you wanted to list, you know, in addition to the tags, you could also say, you know, features used, motion paths, triggers, whatever, something like that. All just recommendations for it. All you really want to do is just do a screenshot, a link to the example. Maybe you want to center that. And then finally, one thing I would encourage you all to do, because I, I did this with the original challenge examples, was to give you know, info about who, who published it, a link to your profile page, as well as your website or LinkedIn, if that's what you used. I, you could even come down here and say about me and then say, you know, David Anderson, and then you could put your, you know, your LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile, right? And, and a link to that. You could put a link to your blog post, personal website, um, things like that. And, and just include all of that if you wanted to uh, include a little promotional info. You put all the work into the building the example, you should you should get some promotion. But what's really nice here going forward is that this is an examples page and this means that we can, you know, combine these with other examples. You can you can share this entire page out, but it becomes like a profile page or a blog post in the Learning Heroes community with your challenge example. Hope that helps. If you have questions, there'll probably be questions. We'll probably have some things that we can do to help make this process smoother, but going forward this is kind of what we're going to do for letting you submit your examples into the recap. Hope you like it. Hope you're as excited about it as I am. I just, I, I love the way these all display as we start to see these examples coming in. Again, you just come up back up to the top and then you can see all of the examples in there. So I'm going back in, I'm going to add a, a few more of these from the previous ones. I added this week's recap for the paper, paper cut designs. And you can see Thumbnail, where's that thumbnail, Leslie? Uh, you can see all the examples from last week's in, it, it has already been added right in there. I did add these for the authors, but what, because these are the authors, they can go in and make any adjustments to their blog post or to their challenging entry. All right, folks, that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Look forward to seeing all of the examples and here's looking forward to another 500 challenges. <laughs>